Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter and now on Vero at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Monday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And you're very welcome. And I think this is going to be a very exciting edition of today's show. I especially am really looking forward to talking about this with you because I think it's so vital and important for the franchise. A lot of us stand, some of us hate it, some of us love some of it and hate the others. It's a complicated fandom, it's a complicated, unique little franchise. So today we're going to discuss where will the Flash movie leave the DCEU when all is said and done? Where will we be with the DCEU? you know, after the Flash movie. We know it's getting rebooted. It's pretty obvious some movies will be deleted. I think all the movies but one are going to be deleted. Let's take it as read that the rumours about the Flash visiting Superman in the Man of Steel movie are true. He pre-warns him that many people will die. Superman takes the fight against the Kryptonians somewhere unpopulated. And in the end, Zod and Feora, with the rest of the Kryptonians, get sucked in to the Phantom Zone. This means, without a lot of destruction in the centre of Metropolis, and without innocent lives dying, going, and people in being in danger, this means that Batman won't be so angry with Superman and won't want to kill him. There's that. And Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor won't have an excuse to go after Superman. Also, there will be no Zod to use, to, use body, to use body and DNA to create Doomsday. So there'll be no Doomsday, right? So that's gone. There will be, as I read the other day, and it makes common sense, there will be no need for Waller to set up the Suicide Squad because Superman won't be dead. And so that's, that's very, very important. That already knocks out. Batman versus Superman and the Suicide Squad movie. Yes, I do believe, and I didn't believe this at the time, but I do believe right now that Batman versus Superman and the Suicide Squad will be deleted. But there is a scenario here that every movie is deleted bar Man of Steel. And I think this could happen. This could be a reality. But then I suppose you could say, but Mick... Hang on a minute, we're getting free movies this year. You can't just delete those movies after making them. Listen, I don't know how they're going to do it. You know, is, is there a way that some movies will stand and some movies won't? I just don't see how you do it. What you can do is you can, what you can do is you can literally go back just, be, just after Man of Steel, but you can have these characters already existing in this brand new timeline. So you kind of start again. But I, I agree. It does seem a bit futile to have a Black Adam movie, uh, to have an Aquaman and a Lost Kingdom movie, and then say, well, these movies don't count anymore. So it's interesting. So maybe not a complete deletion of the entire franchise, but certainly going back to, to just after Man of Steel. Listen, I have no idea how they're going to do it, but I'm pretty convinced now that the timeline will continue just after Man of Steel. Now, let's be honest about this. Zack Snyder or anyone apart from Kevin Sujihara at Warner Brothers ever wanted a Batman and a Superman film straight after Man of Steel. Zack and everyone involved in the franchise, inside and out, desperately wanted a Man of Steel direct sequel, and Zack wasn't allowed to do it. Sujihara decided he wasn't happy with Man of Steel's box office. And it wasn't because Superman's boring or anything like that. Some people simply didn't go and see the movie, didn't, simply didn't like what they were hearing about the movie. The movie was divisive. I think Man of Steel is great. And I think a great injustice was done to Zack and Henry for not allowing them to do a direct sequel of the movie. So Zack was told, we want Batman and Superman in the movie. We want half measures. We want you to make this movie into a Man of Steel sequel with Batman in it. And Zack was allowed to do whatever he wanted. <laughs> so he did. And then that film ended up divisive as well. So what can you do? Can you keep on going back and saying, 
Oh no, well I don't want a sequel of this one. This is what they were doing. Man of Steel, for them, didn't work for them because financially it didn't make the money. BVS made just under a billion, but they wanted more and the reaction to the, to the movie, the response to the movie was somewhat divisive. I'm being a bit kind, it was very divisive. I think we can all remember that. There's no denying that. And so every time a movie came out, they were like, well, we're not doing that again. So we're not doing Batman versus Superman again. Oh, Suicide Squad, well, the reaction to that's not very good, but the money's good. Why was the money good? Nobody actually knows why the money for that film was so good. This was an edited movie by a music video company, but people seem to like it because you don't get that amount of money globally unless people are going back to watch the movie. Let's not forget about that. Then you get Wonder Woman, which is a huge success. Justice League, it's not a huge success. Aquaman and Shazam, huge successes for the studio. They were happy. So it was one moment we were doing well, then we weren't doing well. It's, as I keep on saying, this is not a good franchise. It's a franchise with many a good film in it. And I think these are films that will be remembered it, it, as individual films more than the MCU movies, apart from probably Infinity War and Captain America in the, the Winter Soldier, which were really great original takes. But in terms of films, the DCEU have set a milestone there. I'll, I'll be honest about that. But as a franchise, simply doesn't work. So there was an injustice here. They, you know, Matthew Vaughan's right. They shouldn't have leaped into BVS after Man of Steel. Personally, for me, Man of Steel 2 wouldn't have even happened till the other characters got their solo movies. Then we would have gone to Man of Steel 2. Maybe Man of Steel 2 didn't actually need to happen until the first Justice League movie. Everyone gets a movie, right? I know Iron Man got two movies before the first Avengers. So maybe because Superman, Superman, he can get a second movie before the Justice League movie. That's fine with me. That's what should have happened. But they thought, oh, Batman and Superman fighting in a movie. I know. We'll do that. Lots of money. Two billion quid. Easy. Well, it wasn't easy because you gave an altar the keys to the kingdom. And he did rightfully so whatever he wanted because you didn't give him any limitations. So that was the mistake. So from Man of Steel, they were digging their own graves constantly. Oh, no, that didn't make enough money. Let's be reactive. Oh, dear, that didn't do well. Let's be reactive. And this was the problem from Man of Steel because the money, they didn't make the money they wanted to make. Instead of thinking, do you know what? Man of Steel is an excellent achievement. It didn't make the money. But let's be patient and see where we get on. Let's allow the man to finish his arc, move him away and move on. But they didn't do that. So nobody wanted, on the creative side and the acting side, aka Snyder and Cavill, they did not want to do Batman versus Superman. Zack was given no choice but to make a Batman and a Superman movie. That was, that's not on Snyder. So when Matthew Vaughan says they shouldn't have gone from Man of Steel to BVS, I'm sure Zack would agree with that before you get angry with Matt, which I know quite a few of you have. And this is why I believe, because a lot of you be asking, why do you think they're going to stop just after Man of Steel? Why wouldn't they delete Man of Steel again and start again? Well, there's two reasons. They need a leaping off point, and they, because if you don't have a leaping off point, you can use Flashpoint as the first movie, and that kind of makes sense to a point, but they don't want to delete everything. Clearly, there's been some kind of arrangement with Cavill to still be Superman, for Barry Allen, if this is true, to go to Man of Steel and, you know, pre-warn Cavill Superman in Man of Steel that people are going to die if he doesn't kind of fight them elsewhere, that means Cavill is definitely in the Flash movie. So I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief there. Because if General Zod and Feora are in that movie, so is Henry Cavill. Definitely. I mean, and I know I spoke about Zod and Feora being kind of... Um, variants in the Flashpoint universe, and that, that still could be the case. They could cameo there as well. But it does look like we are definitely going with Zod and Feora being in this movie because Barry goes back to the Man of Steel movie. Now, we've heard a lot of rumours, but really we haven't heard that Barry goes into the other movies. We've kind of insinuated that. I've insinuated that. I've only heard, really, from sources that he's going into the Man of Steel movie. Maybe he crosses through every movie. But at this moment in time, and it can change, I think they're deleting everything 
apart from Man of Steel. The only way this year's movies can stay if they're already in that timeline. And that wouldn't make sense, right? Because Flashpoint hasn't happened yet. And it would confuse the fuck out of everyone. This way, you can do it very, very simply. I mean, I was thinking, wouldn't it be amazing if it's actually Grant Gusting's The Flash that goes and warns um, Superman? You know, seeing Grant Gusting and Henry Cavill on screen together would be fucking amazing. But I, I do assume it's Ezra Miller's The Flash. Um, and of course, Ezra Miller's The Flash is, it, it loves Superman. That's his hero. And he's going back to that, that moment when Superman saves everyone from the world engine in the Kryptonian. So that's going to be a huge moment in the movie for Barry Allen's The Flash. And what that tells you is that this is still Barry Allen's movie, but it's huger than just doing a Flash solo movie, because as we've discussed today and many times, they're using this film to reboot the entire franchise. For me, it's very exciting. It's exciting because anything can happen here. It could be great, it could be bad. We just don't know. That's It's the not knowing that I find very unique. I mean, the cojones on these people to try this, if I'm honest. I mean, it's very gutsy to do this because it's a risk. I mean, listen, they're not losing anything ultimately because the franchise as a franchise, as we've already discussed, is a clusterfuck already. They're not losing anymore. It's a do or die situation. We saw the money brought in by James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. They have to do something. And sorry, Snyderverse stands. It's not because you boycotted James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. It's because there is no customer consumer confidence in the DCEU any longer because it's been touched by too many hands. And this is the only way out of it. To realign the franchise and hope that people trust it again. Man of Steel is not a dark movie. Yes, it's dark in places, but ultimately, Superman is still a very pure-hearted character. There's some jokes in it. There's lots of smiling between Martha and Clark. There's a great relationship between Clark and Lois. There's a love story there. I think that Man of Steel is a perfectly written and structured movie. Man of Steel was never the problem. Say it with me. Man of Steel was never the problem. You look at that film and it was a perfect start to a franchise. And this is why they're not going to delete it. I think it's pretty clear. Because when you hear a rumour once, it could be bullshit. But when you hear a rumour again, and again, and again, you know that Man of Steel is the only movie secure. I've heard many a times that Man of Steel would not be deleted and BVS would be. And this is the question you have to ask yourself before you fight against this and shout and scream. What would you rather at this point? Delete Batman vs Superman but still be able to watch it in your collection, on your television or however you watch things today. Would you be happy to delete BVS so you can get a Man of Steel sequel? That's the question here. And clearly, Zack has knowledge of this. He's a producer on this franchise. He knows. Things are related to him in memos. They have to be. It's a legal thing. If you don't think Zack doesn't know what's going on, then you're not paying attention. And before you get angry with Zack for not telling you that, he doesn't have to tell you anything. And plus, he can't. He's not fucking allowed. So these things have to stay secret. So it's pretty obvious at this point that potentially when we leave the Flash movie, Man of Steel will continue the uh, D DC Extended Universe. So it will be from Man of Steel onwards. We're starting again. So what do they do then? Because they've already had a Black, Black Adam movie. They've already introduced all these characters. Do they not exist anymore? Well, no. Because we've already been told that nothing's forgotten and everything's remembered. Which is interesting because how can everything still be remembered? Does that mean that Superman will still remember? He can't remember because it's never happened, right? Because, I mean, I'm confusing myself. So there's kind of... There is plot holes. There is holes to my theory that Man of Steel could be the only movie standing. I think Man of Steel will definitely... It's either that or Man of Steel will be one of the movies standing. So let's, let's see. If I'm wrong about this, right, and Man of Steel is not the only movie standing, what movies are going to survive? It's pretty clear BVS is gone. The first Suicide Squad is gone. They're not going to delete, let's just say they're not going to delete Wonder Woman. Because we're looking at another point of view here. So Wonder Woman stays. 
Shazam and Aquaman would clearly stay. Um, Wonder Woman and 84 and Birds of Prey, I think they could definitely go because Warner Brothers Pictures, the people there, and Sarnoff and Toby and all of them fell out with Patty Jenkins as much as they did with Zack in terms of Wonder Woman 84 and Kathy Yan's Birds of Prey. The studio hated those movies and had no choice to put them out. Let's be absolutely clear about this. That's why they didn't care, because they knew they were doing Flashpoint. And then you, you look at something like James Gunn's The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, then you would probably say, right, so how is this going to work? Um, because how does that film stay if the first Suicide Squad's gone? It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, so we're going to have to find out how they do it. But there are kind of variables here that they could do. And then we'd have to say, so let's just pretend they keep James Gunn's The Suicide Squad because they like that movie, they like him. It didn't make a lot of money, but because it was a flop financially, they could just go, bomb, we don't need to deal with that film either. I don't think they will, but we'll see. And then you would imagine films like Black Adam and The Lost Kingdom, they, they, they will be part of canon as well. But how... This is the problem here. This is why I'm a bit confused and no one really knows what's going on and we won't know till we see the movie, is how do you delete some films and not the others? With it making sense. Don't forget, you can sit in an office and have a kind of whiteboard, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really, you know, and you may understand it, you may plot it out in your white, you know, you're in Walter Hamada's and Anne Sarnoff's office, right? And you've got Greg Belanti there and they're all plotting out how it's all going to work now with Arrowverse and the DC Extended Universe. But we've got to understand it. If it's a fucking mess and we don't get it, and it's no good sending us all maps and shit like that, it's just going to be straightforward and easy. Personally, deleting everything apart from Man of Steel makes everything easy. And The Flash can explain it before the end of the film. You know, with, with his dialogue. It would be easy. You can't have the Flash sitting there going, well, that didn't happen, your film didn't happen. It doesn't work, does it? So, still a confusing scenario, but I definitely think there's more chance of us just staying with Man of Steel and the rest are gone. But, Andy Machete said, it's like we're starting again. So it's weird. It's a weird thing to say. He's not saying we're starting again. It's like we're starting again. And ever since he said that a couple of years ago at DC Fandom 2020, I think, I thought, hang on a minute. So it's like you're starting again, but you're not exactly starting again. So what does that mean? Well, it's obvious what it means, isn't it? Just after Man of Steel. Makes sense. But as I say, we're getting these new films this year. Do they get deleted? Does anything get deleted or... This, I, I, this, this is the thing. I suppose by the end of the movie, it'll be pretty clear who's there and who's not there. They can kind of have a kind of end bit where we see all the characters doing their thing still. And then we see that Batman's not there, potentially. So it's looking like, at the moment, from the way I see it, that Henry Cavill's Superman is going nowhere. And if Henry Cavill's Superman is getting this special treatment in this film, right, and they're getting Barry Allen to go there and get soups to, you know, kind of warn soups, pre-warn soups that people die and for soups to avoid this and by soups avoiding all of this, it changes the whole franchise. Clearly, they've done a deal with Cavill to do a Man of Steel movie or at least for cameos. So there's still a big future for Henry. Now, they've got to get going here. Henry's now 38 years old. I think he's at least got two or three movies in him. Definitely. Let's hope so. But they've wasted a lot of fucking time. But here's the thing. We can't alter the past like Barry Allen can, right? I wish I could. But then I'd create Flashpoint. Maybe if I create Flashpoint, there'll be no COVID. That'd be good, right? And there'll be no one saying it's all men and nonsense like that. It'd be a lovely world if we just embrace raced each other instead of being I hate this one, I hate that one. Anyway, let's get back to the DCEU. So I just think, even though when I think about the movies coming out next year and for them to say it's not canon, um, you kind of think, oh my god, they're actually going to delete movies that they're actually releasing next year. Now, also, what is actually getting rebooted? The DC Extended Universe, Earth One, or the Multiverse? 
I don't think, I did think maybe they were rebooting the whole multiverse, but I don't think there's any need. It's just Earth 1, or it's just whatever Earth uh, the DC Extended Universe is in. They're not going to work, they're not going to do that to Reeves, they're not going to undo what, they're not going to mess with Matt Reeves, we know that for sure. So Earth 2 will be left alone. So, because Flashpoint is within, basically, Earth 1, although we know that he will be travelling on different Earths, so I don't see how this is going to work. So, it's, again, that's part of the mystery and the excitement, isn't it? This is why I've been excited about The Flash all along. Not just because I love Ezra Miller as The Flash and can't wait to see Grant as The Flash and all these different iterations of these different DC characters populated on different Earths, like the Smallville Earth and different things like this. It's the fact that they're rebooting it and how do they do it? Because, basically, this kind of thing that they're doing what they're attempting needs a deft touch. And if you don't do it gently, if you don't do the right things, it, it's a mess. It doesn't make sense. This is why Spider-Man No Way Home is such a simple film. It doesn't, it brings, it creates new situations and new storylines, of course. But it doesn't reboot the franchise. And I think that 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 is so important that it doesn't reboot the franchise. That that what the MCU what the MCU were doing was they weren't going to start again because of course the MCU don't have to start again and I think that's the beauty of it but with the DCEU it's such a mess that they they have to do this and kind of give it a new look and a, and a new central look and to make it interconnected and try and create something for people to be excited about because the facts are these the mainstream central audience have never been excited for the DC Extended Universe. Yes, us lot who love Snyder's vision have been excited. But if there's not enough of us to make a successful franchise. Now, you don't have to admit that, but that is the truth. And, and, that, and that is the challenge here. So, you know, this is what they're attempting to do. So it makes perfect sense to start from Man of Steel onwards. And I'm happy. If this happens, I'm happy. I'm not happy that they're deleting everything because that's sad for those films, but we still got those films and we can still watch those films. Maybe they won't be canonical films anymore. Again, there may be half measures here where every film still stands. Clearly, this is a chance to clean up the franchise and start from a place. And what, what better place to start from than... After Man of Steel, a movie that was somewhat divisive for certain elements, but there's still, I believe that Man of Steel within the central kind of, the kind of mainstream audience has more fans than BVS. I love BVS, I have to keep on saying that because people will misunderstand me. So I think that Man of Steel is probably the most popular movie within the Snyderverse, and I know the Snyder Cut was loved, but... You can't expect, you know, how many times can you expect the mainstream audience to keep on watching a four-hour movie? Let's be honest about it. I love it. I watch it most evenings, by the way. I'm not even joking. But I think Man of Steel is the film. It's easy consumption. It's a popcorn-chomping movie. It looks great. And if you're intelligent enough, you can tell what Goyer and Nolan were attempting to do with it. It has this great environmental commentary. It has the Kryptonians wanting to kind of realign the atmosphere of Earth so Kryptonians can live there. A bit like what NASA are doing on other planets. So the film is all about how we fucked up Earth, but they're using Krypton instead of Earth to give us the commentary and example. It's an amazing film, and you ask the question, who is the bad guy here? Is it General Zod? Is General Zod the bad guy here? He kills people, he looks like a villain, Ultimately, he's trying to, you know, recreate his race. He's just doing what he's been bred to do. And now we've got the commentary man of Steel about, you know, the, the uh, what's it called? I forgot what it's called now. I was, I was going to say the Genesis Arc. I, I thought I was talking about Doctor Who for a minute. What's it called? The Codex. Then you've got the genius of the Codex, right? That literally, basically, the Kryptonians are clones. And it's already bred into their brains what they're going to be when they're first born. It's a bit like slavery, right? Think about it, right? So these people born, these clones, are literal slaves. Even Zod 
He has no choices here. He's born to be a fucking soldier. He's got the mentality of a soldier. Brilliant concept, by the way, by Goya. Goya's got great quality. I don't care what anyone says about him. And then you've got Superman that's born, normally, naturally. The first natural Kryptonian birth for centuries. He's, got, he's free to do whatever he wants. And he goes to Earth and he's brought up by the salt of the Earth and taught the right things. And he makes his own mind what to do. He makes the decision to give himself up to the Kryptonians in the, uh, you know, in the first act of that movie. Everything that happens in that movie in terms of Superman, he's free to make his own decisions. But Zod is a slave to his instincts. And that's the difference. So it's a fascinating movie. And you can look at it in so many different terms. And that's what I love about it. So it's so good. And I think it's a, it was always a great starting point. And to continue that, which is what they should have done, instead of kind of being scared of the box office and going to a Batman movie, oh, that's easy, that won't take much effort, Batman and Superman. You know, and basically, they dug themselves an earlier grave. I mean, listen, if you want to please people, if you just want to make a popcorn chomping movie, then you shouldn't have brought in Snyder in the first place. You just wanted to make easy money. You know, all tours are not there to make you easy money. All tours are there to tell their story. They don't care about the mainstream audience. Zach's told us that a billion times, and quite right too. But you don't bring them in to do things like this. If you want to make that, you know, the billions and the two billions are moving. Like Spider-Man No Way Home. You just get an average director like, you know, like John Watts or David F. Sandberg with Shazam, right? Does his thing, and that's fine. He's not an all tour. He's a good little director, and that's fine. Not everyone's Zack Snyder, not everyone's the Russos, not everyone's uh, Dennis Villeneuve, you know. You get my meaning, right? There's the auteurs, and there's the everyday directors. They're just as good as the auteurs. They'd, they're literally working for a studio. It's a different situation. So now we're in a situation where potentially we, we could continue after Man of Steel. Now, as I say, all those characters that have already been established could still be there somehow. How that works out, I don't know. But I'm pretty confident now that Man of Steel is definitely going to survive. And it could be the only movie that survives. And it makes sense because they want a starting off point. And there's no better starting off point than the first movie in the franchise. Because I'll say what I said earlier on. Man of Steel was never the problem. You can have issues with the movie. You, as a diehard Superman fan, right? And it's fine to be upset about the neck breaking and killing of Zod. It's fine to be upset about it, right? That, you know, that, that's not an issue one little bit. I get it. I wasn't particularly that upset by it. But I understand why Superman fans would be upset by it. I think it's not cold bloody murder. He had no choice but to do it, and he screams and cries at the end. So you, you, this breaks Superman, and you know he will never want to do that again. That's the whole point as well. And, and so Man of Steel had its problems, but as a whole, as a movie, I think it works on so many levels. Visually, that film is so way, way forward than any VFX I've ever seen. It still looks amazing. I was watching it yesterday. Amazing film in so many levels. So they're not deleting that film, and potentially we could have more Henry Cavill. So I think that's what's going to happen. I think I'm happy if this is going to happen, and I'm kind of confident that Man of Steel stays. Now, what we don't know is what the other movies that are going to survive are going to be, or if none of those movies survive. It would make more sense to keep Man of Steel and just do a clean sweep of all the other movies and just say, boom. But are they going to want to bin the first Wonder Woman? It will be unlikely. But how do they keep some and delete the other? Well, my friends, isn't that the big question? And isn't it why this movie, The Flash, is so fascinating to think about? This has been the DCEU Daily. I'm Nick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss this perfection. And I'll see you again tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. Until then, goodbye. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen. Until then, goodbye.